my name is Lauren. We're doing a color camo video today. All right, have you ever had color before? No. Do you have any allergies? No, I'm sure. What type of shampoo do you use? I use Pantene. Pantene, okay. Just so you know, Pantene can cause the color to fade. So maybe looking into a better, more color safe shampoo in the future. What hair products do you use? Uh, just got to be gel. How often do you normally shampoo your hair? Every day. Every day. Okay, perfect. So usually with the color camo, it lasts about seven to ten washes. So for longevity, obviously you want to use more of a color sh shampoo or you know go a little bit longer in between washes uh, to keep that color vibrant. Do you swim in chlorine pools often? No. What are you trying to achieve with this color service? It's more of a natural look. Awesome. Do you have any pictures of your desired look? You have about 30% gray, which is a perfect candidate. Um, we can definitely blend all that in with the color camo option that we have. Um, it's just gonna bring you a more natural color look, blending in those grays without being too drastic. It's not gonna be too dark. And maintenance at home is basically going to just be a little bit longer in between shampoos using a color safe shampoo as well as uh, just using products that don't really pull too much color. So the color that I'm gonna use on you is a medium natural in the Redken Bruise line, um, which goes with you know the medium brown tone of your hair, uh, which will help blend everything and not be super dark or either too light. So it's gonna give a really natural good blend for your hair, your natural hair color that you already have. Right, so I'm going to be using the Medium Natural in Redken Brews. We'll be applying that with 10 volume in equal parts. So we're going to take one ounce. We're going to fill that up to the one line. A men's haircut, you only need about one ounce because mixed with the developer, it'll make two ounces of product. Gonna go back and fill up with the 10 volume at the number one line as well. Lid back on tightly because it can mess with the effect efficiency of the developer later. It's totally your preference as far as if you want to use a color bowl with a color brush or using a color bottle. I prefer a brush in a bowl just because I think you can get into the hair a little bit better. It's more precise. Whereas a color bottle, you're just kind of going all over and there's definitely spots that can be missed. So using a brush in a bowl just helps you really get all those gray hairs and it's a little bit faster for me. You can gauge how much um, of the color based on the length of the hair. A lot of the times I start off with just half an ounce because that makes one ounce of product and we try to have as little waste as possible. But you can kind of guess how much you would need based on your client and what that client would need. So that's what it's going to look like all mixed up. And we are ready to apply from here. Alright. So I'm just going to start applying the color in a downward motion, making sure that I'm keeping clean, kind of precise sections, which with shorter hair, it is a little bit harder to actually create sections. So that's where the brush really comes in to help and into play. Um, you're going to want to go down and up, and that's really going to get in to all the hair and keeping it very clean and then just moving slowly around the head. The best way that I have found is to do the sides first. So going in, you know, making sure you have a decent amount of product on your brush. Moving the ear if necessary, going down and going up and just really saturating all the hair. And you wanna do this as quickly as possible because this is just a five minute service. Um, the color should only be on there for five minutes and then we're ready to rinse. 
So it's very important to apply and saturate as evenly as possible all around the head and getting it on as quickly as possible. Okay, so Pantene Jeff, really? <laughs> That's like the one of the worst shampoos you can buy if I had known this previously. I would have talked you out of that a long time ago. Alright, so once you get done with the sides, really making sure everything's saturated, making sure the hairline is nice and clean, you're going to move up to the top. I like to work kind of from back to front, um, just because it just helps make a little bit cleaner sectioning and really get it, being able to get in there and using the color brush and really painting that product onto the hair, saturating it as evenly and as much as possible. So for the top, just really depending on how long the hair is, will kind of give you an idea of where to go as far as like direction and how much product and how much you need to paint on, but Jeff's hair is a little bit more on the shorter side, so we can definitely really get in there and kind of see everything. And again, just kind of painting one direction, going through using my color brush and going the opposite directions, really helping me saturate everything. And thinner sections are always better because you know you're not going to miss anything. And again, just really trying to apply the color as quickly and as accurate as possible. I usually try to take about half inch sections, especially on shorter hair, because that really helps get in there and you can kind of see what you're doing a lot better. It's a little bit more precise as far as like painting that product on the hair. And again, just trying to go as quickly and as accurately as possible. So what did your wife say about you getting color? She just said, don't come back looking like Bert Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we should paint the mustache. <laughs> you remember that horrible color he did back in the day? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we are not doing that today. <laughs> or any day. <laughs> For the front, I'll probably apply the color from the front just so I can keep it in cleaner sectioning and I'm not painting his forehead with color. So when painting along the hairline, you definitely want to keep that sectioning clean, saturating as much as possible, and trying not to uh, make a huge mess with the color because we do not want to stain the client's skin. We want to focus just on the grays. And if you have any little extra color left in your bowl, feel free to really just go back through your client's hair, um, kind of rotating around and seeing if there's any spots that you missed or anything you can just kind of repaint and touch up before we start our five minute timer. Starting that timer and then we will be back to rinse out. All right, so rinsing out of the camo color is uh, super easy. I like to use cool water. Um, cool water helps close back down that cuticle as well as rinsing the scalp of any of the remaining color. If you see any spots along the hairline that have a little bit of color on it, I like to just take my dry finger and then you're just going to kind of pre-rub before you shampoo just all along the hairline. That's really going to help lift up any of that color that might potentially stain the skin. So when you're going through and rinsing, you're going to want to make sure that you're rinsing until your water is completely clear 
of any color. Feel free to do two shampoos of any color, save shampoo that you have. And then just remembering to really lift up the neck and getting, oops, I don't think the chair was close enough, that's my fault. <laughs> just making sure you get all the color off the neck. <laughs> Definitely take that part out. <laughs> Making sure that your chair is all the way up to the color sink. <laughs> all right, and again, just with the shampoo, starting around the hairline, really doing those circular motions to get any product off of the skin. of the color camo is to really kind of just blend in those grays without being overly dramatic and not super permanent so if you decide that it, you want to grow back out your grays it's a lot easier to remove or just fade away more naturally without a grown outline of demarcation 